welcome back everyone to another Texan video. In this video we shall be talking about the software ECBCD for Windows. ECBCD is one of those software that can actually save your computer. Why? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to tell you that in this video today. Well, in my previous videos, such as the dual booting ones, I've shown you this software a couple of times and gone through particular tasks in the software. Well, in this video, I'm going to be going through the whole software so that you can get sort of used to it. So, the latest version is 2.02, and you can download it from the link in the description. It's free, of course. And once you load up ECBCD, you should have your toolbox, which will have a couple of options we will go to later. So, right now, we're in view settings, and let's just go through what we have here. So in every Windows computer, you should have a bootloader file. Now, for those of you, there must be some of you who don't know what a bootloader is. Now, this software is basically a bootloader editor. Now, whenever you boot your computer, and if you have multiple operating systems in it, you might have the uh, option to select which operating system to boot into. That's a bootloader. And right here, it should give you details on your bootloader. So the first part, which is this part, should give you some general facts about your bootloader such as the default operating system which I only have one right now so it's obviously Windows 7 and if you are given the option to choose usually have a timer until it boots to the default one so right now it's 60 seconds but of course I chose to skip it because I only have one and the default boot drive which is local to C which consists Windows 7 so it will boot into it and then the rest, which is at the bottom, should give you the list of entries or operating systems. So all I have is Windows 7 right here and what drive it is linked to. And it says there is only one entry in the Windows boot loader. And if you want to look at it in a more complex and detailed way, you can always select the details option to look in more detail. It's a little bit hard to understand. Uh, and this bootloader file is a hidden file in Windows which is not meant to be messed with. Trust me, you do not want to mess with it. Okay, so that's view settings. Let's move on to the edit boot menu editor. Now over here you can change, you can rename boot entries, you can change the order, and you can even choose whether to skip the boot menu, just in case you can only have one operating system like me. Or you can even change how the timer, how many seconds to boot into the default operating system. So over here you can change the order of operating systems. You, should, you would have Windows 7, then Vista, then XP, or Ubuntu, Mac, and such. And you can rename those options. And you can set it which one is default. And then when you're done, save settings. So that's all there is to it here. Now let's say you installed a fresh copy of an operating system on another partition. And you want to add the entry to the Windows boot loader. Well, if you want to do that, of course, there's the Add New Entry section. And let me go through each and one of these options. So, you can add a Windows entry. All you have to do is select which one. There's this time Windows 7, NT2, Windows 2000 XP, the Windows 95, 98, and ME, or MS-DOS. So, usually when you're adding a Windows 7 entry, it would usually automatically configure the drive for you. I do not recommend this. So just disable this option, automatically detect correct drive, and then select the drive which consists Windows XP. All you have to do is go to my computer and check which drive has the Windows XP installation in it. Okay, so that's all you need to know over here. Then we have Linux, where you can add an entry, which is kind of complicated to tell the truth, but you'll get used to it. If you don't know how to use it, you can just check the help and support and trust me help and support for ECBCD is great I'm telling you it's, it's for the help and support for ECBCD is great to tell the truth and they pretty much have every solution to your problem then we have Mac just in case for like Hackintosh or OS X 86 if you have installed those hack Mac OS X editions for Windows then you can add an entry as well and then you can even install the Ubuntu bootloader into your computer, just in case you've got any Ubuntu installations or multiple Ubuntu installations. So Windows PE. Now Windows PE, I think, is a smaller version of Windows. I'm not exactly sure what Windows PE is. Just check it up online. 
Now virtual disk. Windows 7 has this feature to create virtual hard drives. Well, with ECBCD you can mount that virtual hard drive and the computer will read it as a physical drive and then you can add it to the boot menu so that you can boot from it. So that is also one useful feature, virtual disk, but probably the most useful feature that I've ever used is ISO boot. Now let's say you get an ISO. Now I'm sure many of you know these ISO files which consist of operating systems. And perfect example is you're on a netbook. You don't have a CD driver, you don't have a USB for example. What are you going to do? You can use the ISO boot option where you can mount an ISO where the computer will read the next time you reboot it will read that ISO image as a real physical CD and it will boot from it. Simple as that. And that's um, that's an amazing feature for me once. I, I, I actually installed Windows XP using the ISO boot option once and I'm telling you it's perfect and it's to tell the truth it's actually faster than having to mount it to a USB trust me it's a lot faster so I said ISO boot is one of the most amazing features I've ever used in this ECB CD and then we have BIOS extender which adds a couple of more options to your BIOS and I don't really want to mess with this because if it messes up the BIOS then that's going to cause a huge issue Okay, so that's it over here. So let's move on to advanced settings. So you can change a couple of advanced options here. Just select your operating system and you can change which drive uh, that op uh, operating system is linked to. You can change the safe mode options and you can change developer or developers basically like CPU cores and then mount of RAM, etc. Now here comes the two most important options which is BCD Backup and Repair and the Bootloader Setup. So on the BCD Backup and Repair, these two options are probably the most important ones. Reset BCD Configuration and Recreate Repair Boot Files. Now you can reset the BCD Configuration. Now what does that do? What the first option does, it completely wipes out your bootloader. It just wipes out and it's just completely blank. Now once you do that, however, you have to immediately add the entry to your partition or uh, operating system. If you don't do that, the next time you reboot your computer, your computer has no idea what to boot into. So as soon as you perform this action, make sure you add the entry to your operating system, which is Windows 7 or whatever you have. Then recreate repair boot files just in case if... Um, your other operating system is not bootable because the boot file is corrupted or anything then you can use the recreate repair boot files to fix that and change boot drive to that okay this one is sort of getting me confused I'm not sure about that and you can even back up your bootloader settings which is also one of the most important features as well and that is it for this section and the other important section is the bootloader setup which you can boot from your USB in this part or any, any other external media like external hard drives for example and then we have the MBR configuration options which is the most important step if you have dual booted Windows XP with Windows 7 if you have installed Windows XP then make sure you install the Windows Vista and 7 bootloader to the MBR because Windows XP installs its bootloader and therefore removes the Windows 7 bootloader so you won't be able to boot back into Windows 7 so this install the Windows Vista 7 bootloader should help fix that problem just click on write MBR and you're done and then we have the last part which has just a few options such as iReboot which is a software that sits on your taskbar and you can reboot your computer anytime in the power console uh, Windows Vista and 7 system restore this they are free for download although you can just create one here itself system restore system information and control panel right so that is to it for ECBCD that's how easy it is to use this software it's one of the most best software I've ever used honestly this is an amazing piece of software just 1.5 megabytes in size and very very useful whenever you have serious problems with booting in your computer so Free for download and 
check out the link in the description so that's about it hope you enjoyed the video if you did watch subscribe for more so thanks for watching and have a great day